<clears throat> Welcome back to the My Wave podcast. Super excited to have you joining us again. And uh, man, I'm excited about this interview. Uh, we've got a young man here named Bob Marinas, and I uh, can't wait to hear his story. Uh, he was We were just sitting here in the studio talking. He goes back to 1965 with his first board. So I can't wait to hear uh, the story of that board and the story of his his journey surfing. And I want to I want to hear his his most memorable wave. You know, we we have people in here that three, four, five years in surfing, and their most memorable wave is very recent. But uh, I'm excited to hear from Bob. Uh, want to give a big thanks to Billy behind the scenes with Thorpe Creative. Uh, you can check out what he's doing at Thorpe Creative on Instagram. And then uh, also, if you've been listening for a while and you like what you hear and you like, would like to support the My Wave podcast financially, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash my wave and uh, you can buy me a virtual coffee for five bucks. You can support the show. You can buy me 25 coffees and uh, I'm not sure what that is in math, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, it was a, that's a. Never mind. Let's go ahead. I'm going to blame it on COVID. My brain is shot. 125 bucks. Is a, okay, good deal. 120. <laughs> thanks, Bob. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, our sponsor for this episode is Sully's Archery Tag. Sully's Archery Tag is played like dodgeball, but with arrows. It's a lot of fun. It's a mobile event here in southeastern North Carolina. Uh, they bring the fun to you. Check them out at sullysarcherytag.com. <laughs> Well, here we go, ladies and gents. Bob Marinas, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Now, Bob, you and I ha haven't known each other, known each other, but we've been around each other for the last few years, right? Through the Riceville Beach Longboard Association. That's correct. Yeah, and just uh, just recently, we did a beach cleanup after Memorial Day weekend. Yes, we did. And uh, I, I was uh, my bag was full in that short walk. My our bag was about half full. Yeah, and so and late I was surprised that what we found <laughs> yeah yeah so ladies and gentlemen as you visit the beach any beach especially Wrightsville beach clean up after yourself and it, right and be be nice and just grab somebody else's trash too but uh that was a good time and we'll do it again on july 5th after the 4th that's usually a messy messy right day. we actually filled in a hole that somebody had dug oh no and they left it open and it was about a foot and a half deep and yeah. about three feet across yeah so we and actually filled it in <laughs> so nobody falls and breaks their legs right and actually All that right? they're they, supposed to right it's illegal, illegal to leave an open hole that. yeah right. yeah so just be considerate of others and uh pick up your trash and fill in <laughs> your sand right after you leave anyway before you leave bob 1965. Where were you in 1965? San Diego, California. My father was military yeah. in the Navy. Okay. And we moved to San Diego. He was transferred in 1955. Mm -hmm. And we lived um, Mission Hills to begin with. Hmm. Uh, rented, a, rented a house. And I went across the street to nursery school a private <laughs> called francis parker um and then we bought purchased parents purchased the house in point loma okay and i lived a half a block from my elementary school nice a portal nice and the high school point loma uh-huh was two blocks away huh. very and cool and i was i guess as a young child it was like a fish uh -huh. Loved the, the water. Yeah, now that's anything around the water. Now that's Ocean Beach, right? Ocean Beach, and then Mission Beach is Mission across Beach the bridge. Was across the bridge where he went for if people like calmer water, and it's you know like a lake, right? Right, right. and you could picnic and that sort of stuff, and you wouldn't have the westerly winds off the ocean uh -huh. blowing you all over the place. Yeah, so so in 1965, nice you were living in Point Loma. Living in Point Loma. You said you were 14 years old. I was 14 years old. You found a picture of a board with a the, board. And, and you, my you, first board. Was your, your dad took the picture or your dad? No, in my, the grand, picture, my your grandfather. grandfather took the picture in front of our house there in Point Loma. Mm. And I was holding the board that I bought from my friend's brother that had made it. Huh. 
for $25. $25. What kind was, of board was it? It was a balsa wood huh? board. It weighed a ton. Yeah. And it had a redwood fin <laughs> that was shaped like a, wasn't shaped like the modern fins okay. nowadays. It's the old classic fin, uh-huh. big, big fat fin. Right. And my mother drove a 65 Chevy, um, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten. Oh, no, no, that's 65 fine. 65 Chevy. And she didn't want to put racks on the top. Uh-huh. All right, so I had to ride with it in the trunk. <laughs> All right, and I rode in the trunk, too. With the board. With the board, <laughs> sticking out the back with were you, a red flag on it. Were you the straps holding it down? I was holding, no, I was holding the trunk <laughs> so the trunk wouldn't hit the top of the board. And, and ding it. it. And ding it. Nice. Which you, it actually did. Oh, no. But you put a flag out on it. We put a flag on the end over the fin. Uh (laughs) Too funny. And I rode in the trunk, and she dropped me off at Ocean (laughs) Beach. So Ocean Beach is where you cut your teeth surfing. Where I cut my teeth surfing. And it's the only place that I've been hit hit by another board. Really? Well, I don't really know whether it was my board or the other guy's board. Okay. But he cut me off, Uh and I had actually... It was really my first true wave uh, catching the swell before it broke right. to take off. Uh, okay, because I did the white water. That's how you learn. You yeah. do the ride the white water. You learn how to stand. You learn how to turn and all that just by riding white water. Mm-hmm. And at Ocean Beach, it was great because white water went a long ways. Now, I've been to Ocean Beach, and white water does go a long way Yes, there. it does. And, and you're able to stand and maneuver a little bit. Nobody bothers you or anything, but here, here I am on my f- first true wave, and I get cut off, and I get whacked in the back of the head, and I had a goose egg on my neck. Oh, man. All right? Now, boards back then, they were substantial. They were substantial, <laughs> especially mine being balsa wood. Now, how, what was the length of that balsa wood board? It was just under nine feet. Okay. 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 And it weighed, it weighed a lot, but I was able to carry it. Right. So. Right. I didn't really have a problem with it. Now, no, there were no leashes. No, no leashes. So you had to control that. You had to control the board yourself. Mm. Mm. And, and you, you tried the best that you could. Yeah. And you always surfed in the surfing area because they did have areas for surfing uh-huh. and for swimming. Okay. So, and so the what, lifeguards hated you getting into the swimming area for sure especially if you don't have a leash and a 50 60 pound board is yes missling through the white water and swimmers right (laughs) that would be bad yeah so 14 you bought that board 25 bucks was it did it have a brand name on it no no brand name just a friend made it his brother made it very cool his brother was about eight years older than us Uh uh-huh he went. He was at, high, at Point Loma High School. He was part of the Point Loma High School surfing team, huh. um, Sunset Cliffs surfing group, yeah, and such. And uh, I bought it. He sold it to me for twenty five bucks. So. so cool. So in 1965, <laughs> you're 14. So by the time 1970 rolls along, when I was born, you were uh, getting up to you know a big teenage boy. What was the big teenage boy? Um, and, and it's funny because boards start getting shorter. Did they? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. How long did you have that balsa board board? Probably a year. Okay. Maybe a year and a half. And I, I believe I sold it to somebody, but I just don't recall. Yeah. As yeah. To actually what happened to it. What did um, you pick up after you sold it? Well, I, I bought my do Weber performer. Mm. All right, in 1966, I believe it was. I think that's right. 1966, Dewey Weber performer. performer. Nine foot eight. Nine eight. And that's when mom said, okay, we can, we'll can. we put some racks on top of the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that, sticking way out of that that's Chevy. That's sticking way out of the back of that Chevy. <laughs> it was a Chevy Bel Air sedan. Yeah. With yeah. Uh, three speed on the column with a clutch and overdrive. And now, it had air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, and it did have air conditioning. Yes, it did. Wow, wow. So let let's let's talk for a minute about surfing in California. Growing up surfing in California, what was that like? 
Oh, all my friends surfed. Mm-hmm. I think I think what got us into surfing was the fact that we started body surfing. Mm-hmm. Okay, we went through I don't know how many pairs of duck feet. Okay, we'd also get older brothers and friends to drive us up to the wedge. Okay, so we'd body surf at the wedge when it was <laughs> massive. Ma- not massive. I'm not that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I was brave, but not that brave on some of the waves. Right. It was pretty nasty. And we, you know, a yeah. few headbangers on the on the uh, bottom and stuff. And, but we lost a lot of duck feet. Yeah. Now, now duck feet are fins. Fins. Flippers. For body surfing. Okay. okay? Really helps you for in sure. the water. It gives you uh, extra kick and that sort of thing. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you can body surf in a wave without fins, but fins make it even easier. Oh, definitely. Well, from body surfing, we went back in the 60s down at the beach. You could rent those hard green mats. Okay. They were about three and a half feet long. They were probably eight inches thick when they uh-huh. pumped them all up with air. Yeah. But they were hard as a rock. All right. We'd go out. We'd be on the outside. We'd mow everybody over, <laughs> taking off on waves. Well, we started kneeling on it. Uh-huh. You could uh-huh. actually kneel because they were hard enough to kneel on. You could kneel on them right away. Right. Well, then, hey man, we ought to we ought to try surfing because we saw all the surfers and yeah. stuff down at the pier, and uh, then that's how we how a lot of us started surfing. Yeah, surfing green mats, surfing green mats, and then from there we went to boards. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to Sunset Cliffs until after I got my Dewey Weber. Okay. Um, the first time we went to a a spot called Ab, mm-hmm. and you parked on Landera or Sunset Cliffs Boulevard, right where it ends on Landera, and you parked on Cornish, mm-hmm. and you'd walk down through the Cal Western property, okay, the university property. And get to Ab. Well, you had to climb down the cliff. Uh-huh. All right, and there's sort of footholds. And you, the first time I ever did it, I had one of my friends help me because uh-huh. I was short. Yeah, real short. And I had, the board I was nine eight. Yeah, the board was nine eight, and you didn't want to go with high tide. It made it even tougher trying to get out of the water uh-huh. with the waves crashing against the cliff, making the sandstone really slippery yeah yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so so yeah that was an experience and and that was the first time surfing sunset cliffs okay at, at ab it was a left break and mm-hmm. i was a goofy footer mm-hmm. okay that's hey that's how i rode my skateboard right okay we made our skateboards we took our roller skates apart pounded them onto a bottom of a piece of wood that we could <laughs> shaped into a a surfboard, somewhat of a surfboard shape, right? And rode down the street. Now these are metal skates. You hit a rock. <laughs> yeah, you're done. You're done because you're flipping over your head. <laughs> <laughs> They're loud and wheel bite is real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and Point Loma is not flat. No, it's, it's a very, hilly. It's very hilly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I didn't have a car, so originally I would, on some occasions, when Mom couldn't take me to the beach, I'd jump on my bike. I would. Ride my bike down to Ocean Beach with my Dewey Weber underneath my arm. Goodness. <laughs> All right. That's Actually, it wasn't that bad. I'd yeah. stop maybe three or four times on the way down. because it was Switch about, arms? Just switch arms. It was about two miles maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it was, you could be, more or less it was downhill mm-hmm. all the way, mm-hmm. other than one little hill where Nimitz Boulevard was. But. Coming back was a different story because it was back uphill. Right. All right. Right. So, so Bob, let's let's transition to your most memorable wave. You, so you've been surfing a, a while. You still surf today. I still surf today. And not as good as I used to. Sure. I'm losing a little bit, but yeah. hey, I'm getting older, and the body's just not. Working yeah. like it used to. <laughs> Understood, but you're, okay. you're still getting it, right? But I'm still, I can still get it. That's awesome. Right. That's awesome. So, you've got you've got a history to choose one wave, and I've given you a little bit of time to think of it. Yeah. 
where are we going with this one wave? I think I think we're going to my senior year in high school in 1967. Okay. It was Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. It was on a Monday. Hmm. Christmas Day was on Monday. And during high school, I worked at a veterinary hospital. And I split duties with another friend, which I've been trying to think of his name for the last <laughs> four or five days. Mm-hmm. I just can't not remember his name. And we had every other weekend where we'd work at the pet clinic. Mm-hmm. We'd take care of the cages, feed the animals, right? do the treatments if dogs needed medicated baths and stuff like that. And we'd polish the floor, get the place cleaned up for the next day. Well, Christmas Day being on a Monday, I didn't have to work the weekend. Okay. But I had to work Monday morning, Christmas Day. Uh-huh. This is 1967. We had weird weather in December. Uh-huh. Earlier in December, we had a a uh, hailstorm huh. in San Diego. Okay. You never see hail or snow. Southern right? California? Yeah, yeah. I have a picture looking out our front window, and you, the ground's covered. Wow. Inch of hail. Wow. In the street. Well, that was the beginning of December. Toward the end of it, the weather got nice again. Okay. Because it was always nice in San Diego. Yeah. It never rained. You know, there were certain months that it rained. But uh, um, Christmas Day, 1967, I had to go to the pet clinic, let feed the ca- clean the cages, feed the animals. On the way home, I had my own car. I had a 56 Plymouth wagon. Nice. And uh, on the way back, the pet clinic was on Shelter Island. On the way back, went by the cliffs. Uh-huh. They didn't have cams. Right, and no cameras then. Yeah, the only way you knew is you had to you go did. look. You <laughs> should drive, drive the 10, 15 minutes yeah. wherever you were to go check out where how the waves were. Well, one thing nice about Sunset Cliffs, um, coming back from Shelter Island, getting back up onto uh, Catalina Boulevard, then turning on Hill Street. Well, when you come over Hill Street, we call this place Indicators. Okay. All right, it's a small cove that has a beach down below. But as you come over the hill, you can see the cove there. And if you see sw- swells coming in, uh-huh. you know the waves are going to be good. Yeah. All right? Yeah. You go down all the way down to the bottom, turn left onto Sunset Cliffs Boulevard, and then go all the way to the end uh-huh. Uh-huh. Where, it, where it turns and you, and you park. Well, I'd seen this. I knew there were going to be waves. It was going to be hot. Uh-huh. 80 degrees, and we had Santa Ana conditions. Mm. Well, that's winds off the desert Okay, blow straight offshore. Oh, wow. Okay. So so backing up here, indicators, I'm going to assume the name was because you could see, you could the, see swell, the swell, and it would be a good indication of what's out there. That's correct. Uh-huh. It was just to, the, just to the north of the Luscombs Point. And as you go along Sunset Cliffs Boulevard, you're winding around the cliffs, you got all these little indentations and stuff, and you got rock outcrops, yeah. the sandstone that goes out into the water. Well, Luscombs was one of the first reef breaks. Okay. And it's a rock reef. Yeah. Okay. Not coral or anything. Um, and it was a right. Uh-huh. It was a right. Now, here I'm a goofy footer. So going down to the end, it was called garbage. And the reason for that was. When you stood there on the cliff, all you could see was garbage huh. down the side of the cliff because everybody would go there and dump, <laughs> dump it. it. Dump it. Oh, boy. And it was terrible. Yeah. Well, you had garbage, which was the, as you're standing there, it was to the right in front of you. Mm-hmm. Then you had south garbage. Well, south garbage was a left. Okay. And it, it really could get hollow. Uh-huh. Okay. Almost like a mini pipeline. Yeah. All right. So going down there, I looked, I said, I got to come back. Okay. It's low tide. It's going to be low tide in a couple of hours. Uh, I got to ask mom if I could. She never used to let me go out on, on a holiday sure. to go surfing. Sure. You know, she'd let me any other time, but here it is Christmas Day. But <laughs> Christmas Day was Monday. She might yeah. change her tune. So I, I got back home and asked her, and she said, okay, you can go for a couple of hours. Sweet. So thanks, mom. <laughs> thanks, mom. <laughs> so I grabbed the Dewey Weber, jumped in the car, went back. It was probably 
six to eight feet, uh -huh. breaking perfect. Left. Because with perfect lefts. And the thing about it is they'd already built the stairs down the cliff. <laughs> all right. City of San Diego finally, because the surfers all used to climb down the cliff. Yeah. And you get down to the bottom, you had about an eight-foot drop. So one person would climb down first with the footholds and stand at the bottom on the big rock slab. <laughs> and you'd hand grab surf, the boards. You'd grab the boards coming down. Oh, man. Well, they finally built these zigzag stairs down to the bottom made it a hell of a lot easier. Yeah. All right. Then you jump off the rock, go out in the water, and you paddle out about, I don't know, it was about a good paddle. Yeah. I don't want to say it's a third of a mile okay. or something like that, but, but it, a was, good paddle. it was a good paddle through a channel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you weren't getting pounded on the paddle. It was just a long no, paddle. No, it was just a long paddle Yeah. to get to the, get to the lineup. <laughs> All right. Were there guys already on it? Guys were already on it. Uh-huh. And I probably had the best waves that I've ever ridden in my entire life. Now, I've ridden a lot of good waves. Sure. All right. Sure. Let's, let's pause right there. Where in the world have you traveled to surf? Mexico. Okay. By fluke, I went to Thailand and went to Phuket. Huh. And sort of my wife was sick at the time, so she spent a lot of time in the hotel room mm -hmm. and i got friends with the lifeguard there mm -hmm. well i got to borrow one of the lifeguards boards there you go and we had one tremendous day of mm. about head high mm. perfect waves with offshore <laughs> winds How about in that? the in the uh it's called the adam and sea okay they're right off of phuket in huh. thailand that's been the furthest i've okay. ever mexico was a big thing uh -huh. high school we used to go down to mexico all the time yeah down to uh we go down as far as San Miguel. Okay. Um, we camped at San Miguel because it was a, a right point break. Uh huh. Um, we go down to K38. Okay. From Tijuana because Tijuana was right there, and we all, you know, used to hang out in Tijuana. Uh huh. So, um, then I've uh, up and down California mm. as far as Santa Barbara. Yeah. Never been to Santa Cruz. Okay been through there but never surfed there there's just one or two spots along that route to surf right <laughs> well we think we we named swamis yeah all right <laughs> it's up in encinitas right because of the uh the uh the we'll call it it was like a motel that had onion tops uh-huh on these four corners and we called it swamis how about that okay yeah, it's stuck. I don't really, I don't really know how it got its name, Swamis, but uh -huh. that's what my friends and I called it. Sure. And then it finally, they actually have a sign there, "Welcome to Swamis." Yes, they do. All yes, right? they do. And they got the, they got the, the uh, stairs that go down the cliff. Yeah, I stayed right? in Solana Beach a couple of years ago and surfed all up, up and down that way. It's oh fun. yeah, I, you know, I, we'd go drive up to Huntington Beach. We. We drove all over the place. We mm. heard of this one place called Santa Ana River Jetties that was really hollow. Mm. It was a beach break. So we rode up there one time, and, man, it was hollow and beach break. And, yeah. boy, you get barreled and get nailed, too, <laughs> at the same time. That's awesome. With these big closeouts. Yeah. So, um, now nah, it, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, used to surf blacks. Mm -hmm. Um actually was able to at wind and sea got to sit underneath the uh, shack hmm. Hmm. that's a national historic monument now Rizzi. national historic place yeah with the shack that they've had to rebuild about three or four times <laughs> and, and the thing that's so funny i don't think anybody when you look at the cam at wind and sea you never see anybody sitting <laughs> right. okay yeah like yeah. you used to huh. and you had to be in the group to be able to sit up there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> back, back in the sixties. Yeah. yeah. No, the locals were uh, yeah, yeah. a little territorial, a little territorial. Uh huh. Not, not bad. Right. You know, we were all a bunch of kids. Yeah. All right. We were all out there to have a good, good time. There you go. Um, but sunset cliffs was my main hangout. Um, so, so let's go back to South garbage is where you're paddling South out. Garbage. All right. Let's, let's and go back to that paddle out. What are you seeing as you paddle out? Perfect waves. Perfection. Perfection. It was perfect. The weather was, it was warming up. We had off, light offshore winds. Uh, it was, and the tide was 
falling. Yeah. And the best time is medium to low tide uh-huh. or, you know, going the other way. Right. From high tide back down. Well, medium to low. Yeah. And then low back to medium. Um, but it was perfect. And there might have been 12 guys uh. out. And remember, it's a left break. Now, granted, there's a right, but the right is not the same as the left. Uh-huh. The left was a superior break that particular day. Yes. It was just awesome. Mm-hmm. And I had some of the best barrels that I've ever ridden, Oh man, I think. Oh, man. Are we going to talk about one of those or just that this was that session? That just that up? whole session. All right. It was hey. about two and a half. Two and a half hours, yeah, maybe of just perfection. Of just perfection. Friends out that you knew, or guys that I knew, yeah. that I've, you know, we all knew each other. Sure, we all were all y'all hung locals. Out. Yeah, we were all locals. There yeah. wasn't anybody from. Well, it's hard to say. Sure, if there were. Sure, um, they're guys surfing at garbage, but they weren't the same as the waves at South Garbage because uh-huh. it was just perfect. I'm intrigued. And by the problem, the, spot the problem about it is. The cliffs get really, really good. Mm. And it's great that the kelp bed that's probably a mile to two miles out protects it a lot better because of, with the westerly winds. Mm. So it keeps it a little bit smoother. Mm. Um, but that particular day, being about, I'm, I'm going to say it was about six to eight feet. Mm-hmm. Anything above, say, 10 feet, get these big walls mm. and then there's no channel to paddle through. Okay. Why? Cause you get these big walls of water uh. that close out. Yeah. You really can't surf it. So. Yeah. So, so this was a, 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 just the, everything came together for this. Everything to came together for this to happen. Mm-hmm. I even had a couple of guys say, nice ride. Nice. <laughs> As you get coming out of the, coming out of the tube yeah. and you're coming onto the shoulder back into the channel mm. and you're kicking out. Right. Wow. Yeah. Nice ride. <laughs> I was so stoked yes. that that particular day. Now, granted, I've had a lot of great days. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot of great days here on the East Coast mm-hmm. at Virginia Beach, mm-hmm. um, Sandbridge. Mm-hmm. Then, then I, you know, I used to go down to Virginia Beach camp and then go down to the Outer Banks. Mm-hmm. Well, we quit. The, we took the Virginia Beach out. Let's just get to the Outer Banks. There you go. And I've been a Buxton person all along. Yeah. When my daughter was young, she we camped at the Cape Woods campground. She met that they had three boys. Uh huh. Well, they were all friends with the local surfers. There you go. All right. So when my daughter was growing up, um, I went out surf with Tom Curran. Huh. I went out and surfed with. Uh, in Kelly, Buxton? In, in Buxton with Kelly Slater. Yeah. When he was a, you know, little 15, <laughs> yeah, 15, 16 year old. Yeah. Um, at the first jetty. That oh. was where it was happening. How about first that? First jetty and, and hey. Yeah. That was the place. I've surfed at Frisco. Uh-huh. Um, I've surfed up in, up in Rodanthe. Yeah. Um, actually never surfed S curves because uh-huh. we used to just go to the pier. Yeah. On the south side of the pier. At Rodanthe. In Rodanthe. Yeah. Actually, <clears throat> if I ever get the chance to share my my wave story, it's south side of the Rodanthe Pier. I've had a good my daughter and I went camping down there one weekend and we heard through our buddies there, her buddies, because uh-huh. they were all they were all the same age. There's gonna be about a three hour swell uh-huh. up at Rodanthe tomorrow morning. Oh yeah. Starting at about eight o'clock. Won't last till till after. It will last till about eleven, and it's gone. Uh huh. We trekked up there. Wow. Yeah. It was. It was on. Really, it was. It was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And sure enough, eleven o'clock, gone. The waves were gone. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what you get at the Outer Banks. Yes. It can be really good for a couple of hours, yes. and then it sucks. Yep. Have so, you ever, have you ever watched? Um, any of the YouTube videos that Brett Varley puts out about? Yes, them? I have. Yeah, those are some fun ones. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I actually have a video when Hurricane Isabel went through and tore the new inlet uh-huh. on the on the, on the the uh, Frisco side. Yeah. A friend of mine, one of the young kids, 
that still live there. He actually, I hadn't seen him in 10 years. He he saw me at the Connors. Uh -huh. He says, Bob, you got to check out this video <laughs> that we put together. Well, he did a video of this, of the new inlet there from Isabel uh -huh. where they were surfing. Right, right. Where it cut through yes. Highway 12 there, just south of... Uh, South of Frisco. Yeah, they were doing a little yeah. channel surfing. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like, talk about a paddle to get to it. And it was, it was, it was pretty, it, I still have it. It's on, it's on a VHF yeah. tape. Yeah, pretty so, cool. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. cool. So, so Bob, having surfed, you know, since the mid 60s and still surfing now, I love, I love your voicemail, by the way, on your phone. Hey, this is Bob. I'm either golfing or surfing. Leave That's me a right. message, That's and I'll right. get back with you. That's awesome. Well, I'm either one or the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I work at a golf course, too. Do you? <laughs> so, And I play a lot of golf. Hey, I'm waiting for the invite. I'd love to play with you one time. Oh, okay. Yeah, at least, at least give you some laughter. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sure, anytime. <laughs> anytime. Sounds good. So what, what have you seen in, in the years of surfing – what have you seen in surf culture that has impressed you? I mean, there's a lot of things, you know, there's always been stigmatism against surfers and, and whatnot, but what has been the one thing that's stood out that has impressed you over these years? Hmm. You're going to put me on the spot. Yeah. I think, I think one of the biggest things that I've seen with, with surfing and the surfing culture mm -hmm. is – the awareness that everybody has of the ocean, mm -hmm. okay, and and some of the good things that have come out of that, okay, with uh, Surf Rider. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a member of Surf Riders for probably fifteen years. Or and so. what is Surf Riders? Surf Rider Foundation, trying to protect the ocean, okay, protect the uh, you know get clean up the beach, get mm -hmm. rid of the trash that's always on the beach, get rid of the plastic bottles, the plastic bags, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff that we recycle now. Yeah. Um, but just for some reason ends up in the ocean. Uh, okay. Def, yeah. Um, that type of stuff I think is, is really good because mm -hmm. they are surf rider was founded by surfers. Right. And, uh, it's been around for many years now. Yeah. So, um, I was active in the, uh, DC chapter of surf rider. Mm -hmm. When I lived up in Northern Virginia before I moved down here, mm -hmm. um, I really haven't gotten active here in the Cape Fear. I'm a member of it, but just haven't gotten active. How long you lived down here? Um, we moved down here in October of 2014. Okay. 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 I had we had to get I had to get back to the beach. Uh -huh. I grew up at the beach in California. Now I'm back to the beach in Wilmington, North Carolina. And and and, and, and you I were really like this area uh -huh. um there are so many choices uh to go to wrightsville beach if you want to um which seems to be the place to go right but hey i like to go down to carolina beach curry beach fort fisher mm -hmm. since i'm a goofy footer i like the point yeah. in the cove at fisher when it's on when it's on and yes. i've been there when it's on yes if there's five guys or more it's crowded yes all right now I, don't go out yeah I've, but, been, I've been down but there. I, I think the best swell that I have surfed here was Hurricane Jerry, uh, which is after my lady. There you Her go. name's Jerry. All right. They were the, there was only three of us, and we were on the south side of the cove. Okay. All right, because it was breaking better there than it was at the cove. Okay. There were three of us. Uh, the waves were hollow and we had a it's, great time. Yeah, it peels there. It can peel there right off right off that corner of where the rocks make the turn. Okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Fort Fisher guys that we just <laughs> destroyed your no, it's not a secret anymore, but it's not a secret anymore. But yeah. So oh, no, definitely but, uh, one spot. It's a good spot. I haven't been to uh every time I'm over on the the south side, Oak Island, when I play golf at the Oak Island golf course. The winds are howling. The waves are crappy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, my son-in-law's cousin is the bartender at the Tiki Bar, uh -huh. Carolina Beach. He's yeah. also 
part owner of Reggie's 42nd Street. Okay. That's his cousin. Um, he's a surfer. He goes to uh, he goes down to Holden Beach. Uh. Well, Holden Beach's got to be a south swell, and you got to have a north wind. Right. All right. right. You got to have the right conditions. You don't always have that. Not always. You don't always have that, and it's pick and, pick and choose. Yeah. I do know where to go. Uh -huh. I've been told when you see the picket fence, you make you make the turn there and park. Okay. All right. All right. I haven't done that because I haven't been down there to really check it out. Yeah, so, yeah. So. Uh, well, very good. Very but, yeah, I, I love this area. Yes. It is laid back. We're in the south. Everything is slow. Okay. <laughs> As you can tell, things take a long time to get done. <laughs> All right. That's okay. I'm retired. Right. It seems now I have more things to do retired than I did when I worked <laughs> full time. That's so, great. Hey Bob, as we're as we're winding it down, yeah. What's some advice you would give to surfers? Either and 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 I guess we could say new new surfers or uh, maybe Surfers have been surfing a while. What, what's just some, some general advice that you would love to share with someone listening today? Keep at it. Keeps you young. I'm 70 years old now. Yeah. And I'm glad that I can still surf. There you go. Okay. I love to bodyboard. Right. Because I got bodyboard. And sometimes I'll go on a bodyboard over surfing. Why? Okay. I'm not as confident as I used to be. Mm. Um, I do have my, this is sort of a sad story. I left California in the mid early seventies. When my mom moved and moved back East, my parents were divorced when I was young. Um, she gave my Dewey Weber to a neighbor mm. kid. Okay. Mm. Which really upset me. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, my son-in-law and daughter, probably 15 years ago, went to Dewey Weber and talked to Corey Weber, and I have a custom Corey Weber, Dewey Weber performer. Do you Meaning really? They took the only picture that I had of the Dewey Weber, uh -huh. me and the Dewey Weber, and gave it to Corey Weber, and he designed the... Oh, wow. A replacement board. You, you have that? Oh, yeah. I Yeah, finally, you... my daughter just... It's been down at my son in law at, at her house in South Carolina, and... They just moved back up to Virginia after, you know, they've been down in South Carolina for 10 years. Yeah. And they moved back up to Virginia. Um, so I picked it up this last January. Yeah. Do you ride it any or? Well, yeah. I've, okay. I'm having it been in, been on it in 10, in five years. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. Last time I wrote it was down there. Yeah. And it ended up, and I just left it down there. Oh, wow. So, cause I really didn't have a place to keep it uh -huh. cause I lived in a, I was, divorced lived in a basement apartment at a single family house in alexandria and uh had no place to keep it yeah <clears throat> even though i had three boards inside inside <laughs> well, my that, apartment so yeah um but yeah i have it and i'm gonna get on it again oh, yeah on the small on the small days yeah okay very good well bob I thank you so much for your time. Hey, sure. You know, <laughs> my pleasure. We try to keep it between 30, 40, but I know we could go on and on. No, I know. Yeah, just... I, got, I got lots of stories. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think with the kids nowadays, keep at it, mm -hmm. keep healthy, um, keep that upper body strength because mm -hmm. you need it for paddling, mm -hmm. especially with you, with the currents that we have around here mm -hmm. and the currents are pretty strong. Yeah. Um, I knew that for a fact at Frisco. Yeah. Where, well, actually, even at, at the first jetty at Hatteras, mm -hmm. hurricane swell, perfect conditions. I paddled for 45 minutes, never got outside. Mm -hmm. I had to quit. Why? Yeah. I was worn out. Yeah. And this was probably 20 years ago. <laughs> I just, you wore yourself out. And I wasn't the only person. Oh, no. Some of the younger guys could not get out. Mm -hmm. You got caught on the inside. You just couldn't get past them, mm. past the waves to get on the outside. Just keep so paddling. You just keep paddling. <laughs> I think stay healthy, keep paddling, and keep keep doing it. Yeah. All right? And and be mindful of everybody. Very good. And, I, I and, like to be mindful of everybody. There's that surf culture or that etiquette 
of who has priority and different things. We had talked about doing a podcast on on that and talking about these various things of you know oh, yeah. being mindful it's of like, others. And, yeah. And and don't cut the guy off. Right. Just because you want to have the way. Look you left, needed look, one more. Look left, look right. <laughs> yeah. Look inside. And and don't you go take off when somebody's already taken off is in the pocket. That's right. Don't you go take off. <laughs> <laughs> That's happened to me many a times. Mm-hmm. So you know, mm-hmm. Well, Bob, um, you know, you shared with us a, a, a history of surfing, and I want to I want to <clears throat> drop a, a little, little nugget here, and let's see okay. let's see what you think of it. All right. So, in the Bible, in the Book of Acts, mm-hmm. we have a a story of a shipwreck. The Apostle Paul was sailing to Rome, and he, and he had this. It was a bad storm. It had been stormy for days. It, the, their ship hit a reef, and it started to break apart. So as it's breaking apart, everybody swim to shore, and those that couldn't swim, it says, made it into shore. Everybody survived the wreck, but they made it into shore, and it says, some on pieces of the ship. And then the other part of that verse says, and some on boards. So I'm wondering, is that an early reference to maybe some Mediterranean surfers? Could be. Very well be. It's plausible. It's possible to board. <laughs> anything, anything is possible. That's right. I mean, if you're okay. riding a green mat, we were riding. A, we were riding <laughs> green. Those green. See, they don't make those mats anymore. Like no, that. not like the ones that you'd rent at the beach back in the '60s yes. for fifty cents an hour or something <laughs> like that. I forget where they were. You know. Three dollars for the day. Yeah, but they were hard as rock. <laughs> and boy, I tell you what, when you got hit by the thing, you knew it. All right, <laughs> even and it's just a mat that's full of air. Right, right. But it's canvas and it's hard as a rock. So. <laughs> well, Bob, thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a great it. time to spend with you. Okay. All right, y'all, take care. We'll see you. Talk to you soon.